Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy during these uncertain times. Yeah, I appreciate your attendance today. So thank you very much for taking time out of your day to join us. You know, over the last few weeks, we've had several patients call us with questions on hearing loss and treatment. Um, today, I will present the first of several upcoming webinars to address common questions we've received over the last few weeks. So today's presentations will, or today's presentation will focus on why are prescriptive hearing aids better than the, you know, quote unquote, one size fits all models. You know, I'm happy to introduce Dr. Laurie. She is our senior manager of our telehear team. This team sees over 40,000 patients annually. So Christy is an expert in patient care and treatment. Telehear is a national team of audiologists who that work virtually through virtual tele teleaudiology you know, with providers who are staffed in our retail locations throughout the United States. My name is Kent Collins. I'm the director of clinical operations. I oversee the virtual healthcare and in-clinic patient care in all of our retail locations throughout the United States. In the next 20 minutes, you know, we will review the difference between personalized hearing solutions and discuss why it is better than the you know, one size fit all models. But you know, how did this become a problem? So Christy, if you could flip to the next slide, please. You know, let's talk about the prevalence of hearing loss. About 10% of the world's population has hearing difficulties and hearing loss. So that's in the United States, that's about 32 million Americans. It's the, the only second arthritis is the most common complaint in older adult, adults. And it's, it's one of those issues where it tends to go unnoticed because it's not like your, your ears feel pain or they bleed when you have hearing loss. So it tends to be an unnoticed condition. Of the, of the hearing losses that are out there, only about 10% can be treated medically. So, you know, surgical intervention, um, you know, pills. So that includes ear infections that cause hearing loss. Only about 10% of hearing losses can be treated by any type of medical treatment. 90% of hearing losses are treated with the use of hearing instruments. So those tend to be our sensory neural losses, and that tends to be more common in adults and elderly patients. You know, another interesting stat is only about 16% of physicians routine, routinely screen for hearing loss. You know, I'm an audiologist, my physician doesn't screen for hearing loss, and it's, it's very difficult for physicians to even detect a hearing loss in patients they see simply because you're in a small room and it's quiet and you're one-on-one -on -one with the physician facing the physician and you're able to see your physician's lips and there's and it's easy to get the context of the sentence because you're you're talking about an issue you're presenting to the to the physician so generally when you're in a physician's consult it, the communication is good. It's not until you get out in your normal environment where you lose visual cues, there's background noise, that hearing loss tends to be more noticeable. That's why friends and family members notice the hearing loss you know, much more than physicians do. So I, I wanna ask this question, and this is something we'll address in the rest of the presentation. So is it possible that 32 million people in the United States can be treated with the same prescription, you know, i.e., you know, the one size fits all model? So imagine if 32 million people in, had vision loss and it was treated with one type of prescription. You know, how well do you think that would work? So Chris, if we could move to the next slide, please. Um, yeah, and then we got the causes of hearing loss. You know, exposure to loud noise tends to be the number one cause of hearing loss. The second is just our natural aging process. So as we age, the hair cells in our inner ear tend to uh, you know, get damaged and it doesn't pick up the sound waves. You know, genetics, hereditary hearing loss is, is very common as well. Injuries to the head ototoxic medications. So th these are medications that can cause damage to those hair cells I just mentioned. An illness, so like high fevers can spike and cause hearing loss. So the cause of hearing loss is often factors into how we treat the hearing loss. 
you know, so for example, with ototoxic medications, we conduct frequent hearing examinations to monitor any changes in hearing loss due to the medication. When changes are detected, we change the prescription of the hearing aids to correct for the newly identified hearing loss. So if we treated this as a one size fits all approach, we would likely not be supplying enough adequate prescription to the ears and, and therefore you know, the speech clarity and understanding capability would erode over time. So Christy, I'll, I'll hand it to you to go over what happens when we don't do anything about hearing loss. Christy, I think your mic is muted. All right, I should be ready now. How about now? Yep, perfect. Right, perfect. I think we were having some tug of war there with the mute. Um, well, thank you for passing off to me. So why is it a concern that speech clarity gets worse? Well, as Kent just mentioned in the previous slide, oftentimes what causes hearing loss is damage to the inner ear. And when there's damage to the inner ear, what that means is when sound passes through or comes into our ear, that damage is not allowing that sound to actually make it up to the brain. And the brain is actually where we hear and understand. The ear is just that information highway to get the information up to the brain. So when the brain is not receiving all of the information and all the sound, what that means is our speech perception is going to be compromised. We often hear from our patients that I hear, but I just don't understand. And really that makes sense with what's going on with the ear. That information that's making it through is incomplete. And because of that, we're having to put a lot more effort and energy into actually hearing and understanding. We're having to piece together the pieces of what we're getting to make it make sense with what we think we should be hearing. And we do that so often that we can mishear and misunderstand, but we don't realize we're doing it. So when we're in a conversation in a group, we can oftentimes mishear and interject something that's not appropriate to the conversation. Well, that happens enough time and you wanna reduce your social engagement. It gets embarrassing. So you want to withdraw from that. All of these things can combine to lead to impaired cognition, poor physical function, and poor quality of life. While there's no proof yet that hearing aids slow cognitive decline, what hearing aids can do is maintain your brain's connection to the world and people around you. When you strain to try to understand, you become fatigued, stressed, you strain and can develop headaches even. You mishear certain words and that can lead to very um, awkward dynamics and conversations. This can lead to depression, anxiety. It, it will lead to people withdrawing. So I will never forget a story of a patient um, coming in with her husband and her hearing had been declining over years and years. And like most people, she just waited to get it checked out. Well, she and her husband finally came in and we were able to put some hearing aids on her. And when we put them on her in the room and got her programmed and the husband spoke to her and she immediately responded in understanding, he just burst into tears because he was so excited that they could have conversations again. He had been frustrated and had told us that their, their relationship had really been affected by her inability to communicate and his inability to communicate with her. And he thanked us for giving him his wife back. So hearing loss can be so much more than what's on the surface of just not hearing and understanding. It really can impact a lot of different facets of life. So you may or may not have heard this before, but in recent years, we've learned as a, a, a hearing community that hearing loss increases the risk for dementia. And it can do that in three different ways. 
One is that hearing loss can lead to social isolation, which I just spoke about previously. All of those things, all those consequences of hearing loss can cause you to socially isolate, which we know is a known risk factor for dementia. Another way is that hearing loss can shift cognitive load. So what that means is the brain is having to steal energy from other tasks and devote those to helping understand speech because it's so difficult, like we talked about earlier, to really put all the pieces of the puzzle together to understand. And so by doing that, we're taking away energy that the brain could be using to remember things or to you know, cognitively um, interpret things. A third way is that hearing loss is proven to accelerate brain atrophy or shrinkage. If we th think of the brain as a muscle, we know that our muscles require attention. They require stimulation or exercise, if you will. The brain requires stimulation as well. And so if it's not getting that stimulation or that sound from the ear, then that part of the brain that receives that information is going to atrophy and shrink. What we know is that even a mild degree of hearing loss can make someone two times more likely to develop dementia. And the more severe the hearing loss gets, the more likely our chances are of developing dementia. A moderate hearing loss is three times more likely, and a severe degree of loss makes you five times more likely to develop dementia. So I'd like you to think about if you had a cavity and you didn't do anything about it, what would happen? It would only get worse. Um, so Christy, if you could click to the next, it would only get worse. And then you know, with skin cancer is another example. So if you, you saw a little spot on your skin and you didn't do anything about it, it would just simply get worse over time. So like any medical condition, hearing loss is much easier to treat if, when it's first detected. And you just have better long-term success and treatment. So Chris, if we could go to the next slide. Most of our patients, when they first come in, like Christy mentioned, it's not like they're, they're what we call quote unquote deaf and can't hear anything at all. Most patients can hear they just have difficulty understanding speech. They have a clarity problem. So essentially they're hear, hearing about half of the word and they're guessing or trying to fill in the gaps of the other half of the word. It really sounds like people are mumbling or slurring their speech. The brain simply has to work twice as hard to fill in the gaps. Hey, Christy, we can uh, show the next slide because I correlate this to vision. So imagine, if you had vision loss, and, it, and if we correlate vision and hearing loss together, you know, most people can see it, but it's blurry. And you could magnify it, but it just doesn't make it that much better. It makes it easier and bigger, but it doesn't get you the clarity. So when you get prescription eyeglasses, that's where the clarity comes in. And hearing loss is very much the same way. So if we go to the next slide, Hearing loss is where you're not hearing the full word. You're getting part of the word. Oftentimes you're missing the high frequency consonant sounds of speech. So when you have hearing loss, you're not detecting all the sounds of the speech. And we could put amplifiers on your ears and make everything bigger. But again, louder isn't necessarily better. You could turn the TV up. You could have people yell at you and it doesn't help you understand what they're saying that much easier. This is where really it takes prescriptive hearing aids to fix this condition. So you'll notice here is the letters in black are exactly what you see to the far left as far as what this patient's hearing. Well, when we can put prescription into the ears and get the clarity back, that's where all the letters in red jump out now. You know, so the, the patient doesn't have to sit there and guess or strain at what those words mean and what they are. You can focus your attention on the conversation and let the sounds come into your ears normally. So I always tell people you hear with your ears, you understand speech with your brain. So we must correct your ears to stimulate your brain. Is it, you know, so I wanna ask this, I'll go back to the beginning. 
Is it possible that 32 million people in the United States can be treated with the one size fit all approach? Again, likely not. You know, so not everybody's going to have the same prescription, just like eyeglasses. You could take, you know, somebody's prescriptive eyeglasses off of them and put it on yourself, and it likely won't help you. So everybody has different prescriptions. I'll hand it back to Christy to go over personalized hearing solutions. Thank you, Kent. So you might ask, what is the difference between what we're calling a personalized hearing solution and something that you can get off the shelf? Well, when we talk about a personalized hearing solution, we're talking about a treatment plan. And a treatment plan is much more than just a pair of hearing aids. It's everything that you see listed here, and I won't read off each one by one, but you'll see several things that are very important to the overall success of how well you're going to perform with hearing aids. One of which is cerumen removal, which is wax. So what if your hearing difficulties are just because you have wax in your ears? So if you go buy something off the shelf and put it in your ears, you're not gonna hear better with it, but maybe it's not the device, it's your ears require cleaning. And so going in to have a professional take a look in your ears and take care of things like that can play a big part in how successful you are ultimately with a treatment solution. Another thing I'd like to point out is speech and testing, or excuse me, speech and noise testing. Oftentimes our patients will tell us that they do okay in a one-on-one -on -one environment. Well, most people do, but it's in noise where they're noticing a lot of difficulty. And so when you have a speech and noise test, we really find out, are you breaking down in the presence of noise? And if so, how are you doing that? And we're going to recommend something different for you if you struggle more in background noise than in a quiet situation. It's also important to have a, an annual hearing test in order to make sure we are prescribing your hearing aids correctly. We want to make sure that we're not under treating the problem. That can be as serious as not treating the problem at all. So you'll see under um, this solution, there's a really wide range in costs here from 1000 to 8000 as a rough estimate. That all depends on the level of service and warranty that you're getting. And comparing that to uh, something remote care, it, which is very popular in today's environment, this cost is going to be different because the services that are offered with this solution are going to be different. Don't have quite the hands-on approach. However, you are getting a personalized solution based on your needs that you're communicating to your hearing professional. They are gonna have a more limited case history, um, of a more limited test than you would have within the office, but you are remotely fit virtually by a professional who is listening to your concerns and addressing them with the device. Um, we always say that we do not treat an audiogram or a hearing test, but rather a patient. And so that direct connection to a hearing professional is very important. And of course, that is compared to something over the counter that you can just pick up off a shelf, which is not gonna have any of that personalized attention that the previous two solutions I've mentioned are. There's gonna be no test, you're gonna fit them by yourself, and you're not going to have the support of that professional. So during COVID-19, um, been doing a lot more of the remote fitting in order to keep everybody safe, but also make sure that people are hearing their family and friends. So with this, we are doing a lot of same day test and fitting, and we're allowing that follow-up care to be completed in the comfort of your own home. So you're not having to get out and be exposed or expose others, um, but we're getting you the solution that's going to have you being able to communicate with your friends and family all within the comfort of your own home. And this can continue after COVID as well. So there are various solutions that we have where you can virtually connect with a hearing professional. Um, you can see them and they can see you so that we can make sure we are getting you a personalized solution to help your specific needs. So what you're looking at right here is the site that my team works from. It's called telehear.com and you see that big green consult now button in the middle there. If you just go to this website and click that button, it will let you talk to a member of my team, an audiologist that can give you the support, answer any questions that you may have about 
hearing, hearing loss, or hearing aids, we'd be more than happy to speak to you, um, answer any questions, and this could be for a loved one as well. We could have multiple people involved in this conversation, which is what we always encourage. It's always great to have the support from uh, friends and family or loved ones in this hearing journey. And during COVID-19, some patients just are unable to um, come into the office, but they would feel comfortable being served with hearing issues in the comfort of their own vehicle. So we do offer curbside service and we can do testing, we can fit hearing aids, we can do follow-up care. So if you have any hearing aids you would like cleaned or maintenance, you could certainly set up an appointment and drive up to our office and you don't have to get out of your vehicle. You would just call a number and our audiologist and hearing aid provider would come out to your vehicle and again, practice good social distancing and infection control. And they could take care of you while you're in the comfort of your own vehicle. The other option and the next slide is at home care. If you just are unable to leave your house at all, yeah, we can go to you to help you with any testing, fitting, and follow-up care as well. So again, we practice good infection control and social distancing. Uh, we would never go inside of your home. You know, we would leave uh, the, the hearing aids right on your step, walk back 15 feet, let you open the door to get the devices. And then we could even program and adjust the hearing aids while you stand inside the front door. So this is an option as well. And I'll let Christy go over some other hearing aid options and solutions that we offer. Christy? Thank you, Kent. So in addition to hearing aids, we have a lot of what we'll call accessories or solutions to help um, specifically around the house and in those more difficult listening environments. So what we see on the far left is what we call our table microphone. And this microphone allows for you to hear uh, various people who might be seated in different positions. So a, a, an example of where this might be useful is at a conference table or maybe even a long dining table. If you're struggling to hear the people on the other end of the table, you could put this table microphone on that side and it's going to have microphones all the way around it so that it's going to pick up on that conversation and stream it directly to your hearing aid as if it would sound as if you're sitting right next to those people who are talking that may be some distance away from you at the end of the table. Um, we have on our telephone example here an app called our Thrive app, and this connects directly to our hearing aids and allows you multiple functions. You can control your hearing aids in different programs, volume, etc. from your phone. You can stream phone calls and various media from your phone, and that's one of my favorite features of wearing the hearing aids. You can also track your brain and body activity. So there's a, a step tracker, much like a Fitbit in there, that's actually more accurate and a really another uh, great feature that we can use to improve overall health. In the top middle there, we have um, a hearing protection, a customized hearing protection solution that can be used for shooters. We've also made uh, various musicians plugs for those professionals, as well as um, hearing protection to go to concerts or for those in the dental profession that require them. The TV streamer is a really neat thing that a lot of our patients like. It connects directly to the television and streams that sound directly to hearing aids so that if somebody in your household prefers a different volume than you do, you can still watch television at a volume comfortable for both of you so that you're not neither one of you are compromising. The remote microphone in the bottom on the middle it's also a really great thing that a lot of my patients have used in a church environment or a car specifically. Um, if you're sitting in the back seat of a car and you're trying to have a conversation with someone in the front seat, that can be difficult. There's road noise, the person talking is facing away from you. If they were to pin that little remote microphone to their shirt and have them connected to your hearing aids when they speak it's going to send that signal directly to your hearing aids so it will sound like they're just inches from your ear it can make a much easier conversation in difficult listening environments like the car 
The telephone that's shown there is a closed caption phone. So not only does it have an amplifier on it, but you can actually read what the person on the other end is saying in very large, bold print so that you can have an easier conversation over the phone, which is often a very difficult thing for people with hearing loss. The glasses that you see have a device called an OrCam, and what that is going to do is actually read what is being said into your hearing aids. So for our vision impaired patients, if they are simply looking and tracking at something, it's actually going to take that text and uh, send it to the hearing aid so that you are hearing what you're seeing. So the answer is to the question, personalized hearing solutions, why is it better than the one size fits most model is simply phrased as we don't fit audiograms and test results, you know, we fit patients. So if we were just going to look at your test results and hit a button to put a prescription in there, that's mail order. You know, we could certainly have you come into our office or provide, you know, curbside or at home service. And we customize a treatment plan for you. So it's not just providing a hearing aid like Christy just went through. Oftentimes, people need the TV streamer. They need the remote microphone or even preventative care. Maybe your hearing's perfectly normal. You know, what's, that's great. Let's keep it that way. Let's make sure we get you the right hearing protection. So with that, Christy, how would we know if people have hearing issues? So if you are frequently asking people to repeat themselves, if you're turning the television to a volume that other people mention are loud for them, if you have trouble understanding conversations, in particular in noisy places, if you have difficulty hearing women in children's voices, if you feel like other people are mumbling often, if you have trouble hearing and understanding on the phone, if you're avoiding social situations that you once found enjoyable simply because you're not being able to keep up with conversation. If you have ringing in your ear, something we call tinnitus, it could be a ringing, roaring, buzzing. Oftentimes this co-occurs with a, some degree of hearing loss or if you're told by others that you have hearing loss. It's worth getting checked out. Oftentimes those around us notice that we have difficulty hearing before we do. So listen to these signs if they're happening to you. So what are the next steps? You know, after this webinar, you'll get an email and it'll be a follow-up email. And in that email, you could certainly hit a link and register and schedule an appointment in any of our offices throughout the country. You could also call the phone number if you'd like to write it down. 877-846-5551. So again, 877-846-5551. And you can choose to schedule an appointment. And I always encourage people, even like Christy just mentioned, even if you don't see any of these signs of hearing loss, just having a baseline test is very important because we'd like to repeat it and if, if in the future if you do have a hearing loss we can always compare it to the baseline and see how rapid it's changing maybe it's slowly changing it's going to help us gauge when if necessary to treat the hearing loss so certainly baseline testing is very critical for uh, the treatment plan overall so with that, you know, I will open it up to any questions. So if you have any questions, you know, please, you could unmute your microphone. You could type it into the Q&A session. I do have some questions that already came in. Um, so let me begin with one of the questions. Um, Christy, this is for you. My doctor told me that hearing loss is normal for my age. You know, how do you answer that? Yeah, that's a great question. One I've heard many times over the years. There is never um, a time for it to be normal to have hearing loss, regardless of age. Is it more prevalent as we age? Yeah, it is, but it's still not normal. So I would, if you are concerned about your hearing at all, um, just 
get your hearing tested, get it evaluated. Um, I've also heard, and this may be a question, Kent, that I'm jumping the gun on, but while we're on the subject of what doctors have said, if your hearing loss can't be fixed. And from a doctor's perspective, it can't be fixed. It can't be fixed with a knife or under a scalpel, but oftentimes, um, more often than not, hearing loss can be treated with hearing aids very effectively. And so I would encourage you to certainly talk about your concerns about your hearing with your doctor, but if you're having concerns at all, please get your hearing evaluated. As Kent said, maybe there's not anything going on and you'll just have a great baseline, but more often than not, if you're having concerns, there's something that's gonna be found. And Sandra just asked a great question. Does insurance cover some of the cost? I'll answer that one. We are happy to check your insurance. The good news is more and more insurance companies are covering hearing aids and treatment plans. Um, if you would have asked me that even two, five, two to five years ago, very few insurance companies covered any treatment. Now, a lot of insurance companies do. So if you uh, would you, if you schedule an appointment by clicking the link in the email one of our insurance specialists will call you and gather your insurance information and they could check to see if you have any hearing aid benefits the good news is just coming in for the hearing exam is complimentary there's no charge for the hearing test so your insurance will not be billed for that visit you schedule for a hearing examination but we like to review if there is a hearing loss, we'd like to let you inform you and let you know what your insurance coverage is and what your responsibility, if any, would be for the treatment plan. So we are happy to check that for you. There is another question, Christy. My friend tried hearing aids and they don't work. You know, we, how would you answer that one? Well, I could probably spend an hour um, going over all the reasons why people would say that a hearing aid wouldn't work, but I would encourage you to not let that stop you from trying. Um, it can be a personal motivation reason why somebody wasn't successful. Perhaps the prescription and the hearing aid wasn't correct. Maybe they weren't comfortable. Really, there are um, there are many, many, many things that we can do to um, get the fit prescription and sound quality comfortable for you. And with hearing aids, there's an evaluation period. It's a law in every state that you should have at least 30 days to evaluate hearing aids once you decide to try them. And so there's really no harm in trying it for yourself. You want to make sure that you have the authority to speak on hearing aids and not let somebody else experience dictate uh, how you treat yourself. And Dr. Lowry, we have another question from Corey. It says, my hearing aids are not comfortable. I don't wear them because they itch and the tube feels too short. I think my ear canals are too small for them. You know, are there children's sizes? There absolutely are. I would encourage you, Corey, to go back to your fitting professional and ask them to resize or refit the hearing aid. And if they're unwilling or unable to do that, find another professional. And, and that would be one of the things, Corey, if, when you schedule an appointment, come in for the complimentary hearing examination and our professional can look at it and make sure you, you know, if, if we need to put different tubes on there, you know, we certainly carry everything in stock and we'd be happy to look at that. The, the last question, Christy, is, can I pay for services in the clinic as I need it? Um, so I, I'll take that one because I've, I've kind of worked with that is, you know, you, we do have service plans. So if you didn't purchase the devices from us, you know, we have really low cost, you know, some, some services are completely complimentary. So there would be no cost. Um, and so it's what we call an unbundled fee schedule. So if you need, any, like, for example, Corey, if you just need to be in change, that's a fairly inexpensive process. Um, so you could certainly come in. Um, if you purchase service plans, we do have that. So service plans would be like those treatment options that Dr. Lowry reviewed as far as 
you know, tinnitus, um, you know, therapy, um, what we call oral rehab therapy, helping you go through communication strategies, uh, just reprogramming the prescription, you know, doing an annual test and reprogramming. We do have very low cost service plans available as well. So I think we covered all the questions. Um, you know, I appreciate everybody's time today. You're welcome to, again, follow up or give a, uh, a phone call to us. You could go to telehear.com and hit the green button if you want live uh, answers to one of our audiologists right away. Or please follow up with the email link you'll get later on, and you could schedule an appointment. And you could certainly bring in any additional questions or uh, feel free to call and ask questions at any time. So I really appreciate it. Thank you for the time you've taken today. Thank you very much. Have a nice weekend.